My guest today is Jeff Fritz. Jeff, how are you, my friend? Oh, uh, it's so good to see you, David. My gosh. It's we haven't, too we long. haven't talked in a while. Ah, uh, yeah. My goodness. What are you doing these days? I am writing code, telling jokes, doing the, the online thing. Um, I'm, I'm planning and getting ready for, for .NET Conf, um, leading and, and managing a series of events, uh, online events. I feel like we've been doing online events now for, for what, we're, we're in the 700th day of March 2020. Is that how this works? <laughs> um, 700th day of March of March 20. <laughs> right. So um, it, it's... .NET Conf is a series of events. We've been holding these annually now for 11 years, all online. Um, gosh, we've, we've made use of all kinds of bubble gum and string technology to pull together and stitch together video. And now it's here in 2022, it's, it's common how we can put together a conference and video series online. But we're, we're running a series of these events. Of course, we have the focus event that we ran in August. Uh, August 9th, we ran a focus on .NET MAUI event, eight hours talking about .NET MAUI. And in November, November 2022, we're going to be talking about and, and launching uh, .NET 7. All the new features that are coming with .NET 7, all the capabilities of C Sharp 11, updates to .NET MAUI, to Blazor, all of that we're going to announce and cover in a, in a three-day event um, it's a pretty exciting event. We're, we're really looking forward to that. And then we, we're going to continue to try and schedule and host these focus level events that are just one day with, with all the, the look and feel of .NET Conf that we'll schedule. We'll invite folks to, to cover a technology or um, a, a practice. We did a focus event a year ago about microservices. Hmm. So not a specific thing but here's how we do microservices and bring in folks to talk about Azure technologies and .NET technologies and how you can pull them together. But for the big .NET Conf event in November, we're going to be covering everything. All, everything .NET is on the table as part of that event. And we're, we're just at the beginning of the planning process here in August. Very excited about what can, can happen for that event. Awesome. This reminds me a lot of the old days when uh, every three years, Microsoft would release pretty much all their products, the Office products, the developer tools, the database products. They'd release them within a couple of months of each other, and then they have a big launch event. Mm -hmm. And we ran out a uh, space in, uh, usually in, in, in Washington or San Francisco, but sometimes all over the country. There'd be one in Detroit, oh, yeah. one in Philadelphia. Um, and uh, that, was, that was kind of the pulling back the curtain and mm -hmm. showing everything. This it sounds mm -hmm. like a version of that. Is that... A fair statement? Yeah, it's pretty pretty close where um, we want to make sure that it, in, in a day where we don't have, right, we're not shipping boxes to, to retailers, right? We're, we're not putting something um, out there that you need to wait to go and download. It, everything's open source. Mm -hmm. So to make the technology available and draw that line and say, okay, here's the optimized production ready version that we're going to support for the next three years and, and kind of celebrate that and, and show some intro content, show some advanced level content and, and really celebrate everything that we've accomplished, not just as Microsoft, but as a community. And that's a big part of .NET Conf is we bring the community in to show off some of their learnings, some of their accomplishments, and, and inspire other folks a as part of this three-day, it's not even a conference, it's almost a festival at that point. And we want to want folks to go away, come back to, to their office, come back to their coworkers on, on the following Monday and go, there was something really cool I saw on .NET Conf. Right. Did you see this session from Dave where he showed us how to do X, Y, Z, and I, we need to go and try this out. That's what we want to inspire and encourage folks to do. So is it, is it that same level of Big Bang event? Absolutely. It, but it's only for .NET this year. Last year, we did exactly what you're talking about. We launched Visual Studio 2022 on 
that Monday, I think it was like Monday, November 7th. And then the, the next three days were .NET Conf. So here we did Visual Studio 2022 on Monday. On Tuesday, we launched .NET 6. And the rest of that was of that event was covering. Here's all the updates for it. And then our Windows friends, they went and published some other capabilities later in the month. And it was that same energy around, hey, there's a big change happening here. And it all gets uh, launched and made available about the same time. Now, uh, what was the driver back in the day, of course, was, well, everything has to run on Windows. So new version of Windows means new APIs, which means and new capabilities, which means we need a new Visual Studio so you can build apps to run on the new Windows. So you had to launch a new Visual Studio, a new developer tools, a new .NET framework with each version of Windows. So yeah, we really did get lockstep in with Windows as those features are being made available and deployed. To, to have that separation that we have now with, with, well, it was .NET Core, and now .NET 6, .NET 7 going forward, and even as we start planning for .NET 8, um, yeah, there's there's freedom for us to ship and change and and separate things out a little bit and and adhere more closely to what our what our developer community needs, what our customers need, and not so much it be be tacked right onto another product. Right. Pretty good stuff. Uh, it sounds like an exciting event. What what is your role in this? I am the the janitor who's going to be pushing a broom behind the scenes. The, the, the <laughs> chief janitor, let's be clear. That's right. I'm in charge of making sure that toilet paper roll <laughs> is changed and ready for when the hosts come in. No. Um, so I, I'm, <laughs> I'm the executive producer now for the .NET Conf events. So the, the buck stops here for the entire event. Um, there's, there's a lot of... Um, logistics, marketing, um, and, and the logistics, not just of how do we get things running in a studio, but how do we bring in folks to be able to present from all over the world, those community speakers, whether they're in Sydney or they're in Barcelona or, or they're in Johannesburg. We want to make sure that folks from wherever they are can present, can speak on their time zone, on their schedule, and participate and be a part of the event. Uh, interesting. Community speakers. So that suggests that it's not just oh, yeah. Microsoft delivering this. That's content. right. Mm -hmm. So we, we set up the schedule in a way that the first day is, is our announcement day. It's, it's here's the big announcement, .NET 7, and we're going to have a bunch of supporting content around that. Mm -hmm. And the next day, we're going to get into here's some of the other Microsoft tools and technologies that you can use with .NET 7 and what that what that means for you to be able to improve your experience. So we're going to try and bring in some folks from Power Platform, from Microsoft Teams, and talk about how you can build Teams extensions with .NET 7. Uh, of course, Windows folks, Azure folks. And we want to make sure that you get the whole picture of .NET isn't just these couple things that you can build in Visual Studio, but you, can, you, you have this vast ecosystem of other Microsoft products that you can integrate with and really deliver a complete experience. And then those are the first two days. Those are just eight hour days. Those are nine to five Microsoft days. Like, uh, okay, the, uh, 16 hours of Microsoft content. But then at the end of the second day, at 5 p.m. on day two, the community takes over mm -hmm. and we start bringing in folks at, at, at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, so early evening for folks on the west coast of the states and North America, we start bringing in community folks, and then we hand off around the world. We'll have folks then start speaking from Hawaii, from Australia, from Asia, India, uh, uh, Africa, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, South America, and then back to North America again, 24 hours straight, all around the clock, community speakers, 48 sessions leading up to the end of the event on uh, at 5 p.m. on day three. Really, really inspirational to see so many folks excited about .NET, all the cool things that they've done. We've had folks give talks about how they, they have .NET monitoring their hot tub 
how they <laughs> wired that up. I, somebody, it, we, uh, Cam Soper showed us one year how he's got .NET running his barbecue so we can have <laughs> picture-perfect ribs every time. Two of my like, favorite things, .NET and barbecue. <laughs> right? And that type of... Let me show you how I put these two things together. Really cool sessions. Not just, oh yeah, I can run a query against a database and make it run really fast. That's, uh, okay, that's fine. But being able to do more with the technology are the, those inspirational things that, that get people thinking outside the box. And, hey, what if I can do this? And that stuff that that I love seeing every year, seeing those submissions come in that encourage folks to do and try new things. Oh, how do those submissions come in? So we have a open call for content for, it, it's not just folks in the community, but those Microsoft presenters have to go through the same call for content right on the front page of uh, .NET Conf .NET. You can click through there. If you've already got a Sessionize account, you can log in with that and access some of the other uh, presentations you may have given recently, but um, you can click through and submit content directly from Sessionize, or we have a link to get you in there from the front page of our website. I'm looking at it right now. Looks like the call for content is open now and closes September 8. And, yep. Uh, it's 11.59 p.m. I'm not sure if that's my local time, but just let's just say it's September 7th, just to be safe. Yeah. So we're looking for a whole bunch of submissions. We're really excited to see folks get involved and, and what ideas they have, things new and cool things they've been doing with .NET, some different ways that you may have learned or interacted with it, something that, that makes a difference for you and your project. Mm -hmm. Share it with us. Let us know, and, and maybe we'll put you on the big stage for the event. Each session is 25 minutes with five minutes of Q&A time at the end. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so it's all it's all uh, live sessions, or are some of it recorded? So we do have some recorded content that we will publish day of. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's always a, a, a plenty of Microsoft speakers that have announcements and techniques that they want to show around their technologies, around their products that they're releasing. And of course, 25 minutes is is not a lot of time. You can get right maybe four or five demos in in that time. So if they want to go deeper, if they want to explain and go further, we'll have some pre-recorded content that launches day of. Um, I, I expect we'll invite some community folks who don't quite make the, make the bar to, to appear and present live. We'll invite some of them to record and, and send over some content as well that'll be published day of. But uh, the, the majority of the content will be presented live. And of course, everything's recorded from the live event and will be published and made available on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash .net. You'll find it out there eh, within a few days of the event. I was going to ask you about that. Uh, the, it is archived on YouTube. Are, uh, is last year's content out there as well? Last year's and I think the previous two years before that are out there as well. You can go back a couple years on .net conf events on uh, the YouTube channel. There's My playlists gosh. for them. I am scrolling. I'm infinitely scrolling through There's this content. Lots. And I'm still on last year. I haven't even got to oh, yeah. uh, right. this now. Oh, yeah. Right. Each event has 80 sessions. So we have plenty of video out there for you if you're interested in learning about .NET. And we're planning more events. We're, we're looking at what's, what's the next focus event after November. We'll figure that out. Ah, you don't know yet. Um, uh, we've got some plans we're kicking around, but we'll see what happens. Uh, very cool. So the event is on uh, in November um, five through oh sorry eight through ten. The call for speakers is open now through September eighth. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, what else? What, is there anything else we haven't talked about that we should have? Well, I, I think we should talk about right the the evolution of these these events. Right? I mean, okay. gosh, we've been doing. You and I have been speaking at events for years and years and years. And I'm, I, I notice you're wearing a green shirt, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to, going to call, call that out because, of course, the first time we met was uh, Speaker Idol at... Ten plus years Tech ago. Ed. Ten years ago. Can you believe it's been ten <laughs> oh, it's years? It's crazy. It's crazy that we haven't aged. Not, not a bit. <laughs> not 
Not a bit. If anything, your bit. hair has gotten bluer. <laughs> it's gotten bluer. Look at that. Um, and and right, the big thing at the end of at the end of the speaker idol competition, right, to get to speak and and and, and audition effectively for the next uh, the next tech ed, right? Going through that process was so much fun, and we don't have to do that now. You can put together the, a call for content, submit, send us links to video previous presentations that folks have given, and it's. <clears throat> it, it's it's a fantastic opportunity for new speakers to get involved with yes. .NET Conf. Um, but I happen to be wearing. I don't. Can you see that? You see Check at North America. That's a I have. Throwback. So somebody won in 2012. So, somebody, one of us, won well, the, oh, well, the speaker idol contest. Yes, in 2012. All I remember is that you and I were in the finals, and one yes. of us won. <laughs> and one of us won. The other one. Not so much. <laughs> the other and one was never heard from again. <laughs> never heard from again. But the next year, I competed in the 2013 edition, and I didn't win that one either. You also made the finals that year as well. So I also know. made the finals. And 2014, I, I got the job at Microsoft and went and spoke at the last tech ad. Ah. So finally, two years after we spoke... It, and and met at that first one. Yes, I, I finally got my chance to speak at Tech Ed, and it was it was pretty amazing. It is um, I, I I think back to that, and and that's what I thinking of and going through that process is what I really like about opportunities like not just .NET Conf and having community speakers, but also some of the other live video events and opportunities that we have, like like this show, live streams that we do over on the YouTube.net channel. Um, we have live streams we do on Twitch TV slash Visual Studio. The Microsoft Reactor has live streams we do as well. There's all kinds of great opportunities for folks from the community that do something cool to share, hey, here's what, here's this thing that I'm doing, and to get involved. You don't have to wait till the end of the year and get involved at the big tech ed or now Microsoft Ignite event. It, there's great opportunities for folks to to be recognized, not just become an MVP, but speak and share content that's going to get picked up by a podcast like this or a, a live stream shared and, and may help change your career. It sets yeah. you off in a direction that that's pretty... Uh, it's going to be pretty important to the rest of your life. Yeah, and I think uh, you've been better at this than almost anybody I know. Is, uh, the, oh you, using the online content to get your message out. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. So, um, gosh, it was 2017, and and my job was was to to be a, a, a leader in the .NET community and as a community manager for Microsoft write the blog posts, write the blog posts about here's what's coming, here's what's happening, showcase and, and put, put interesting content out there on a regular basis. I'm not a writer, Dave. I'm, I, I got into about October 2017. I, I, I said, this stinks. Oh my gosh, I'm, I am worn out. I, am, I, I, I dreaded looking at that blank, the, the blank sheet of paper problem. Right, look at opening up Microsoft Word and it's empty. And what the heck am I going to write? And I, I, I spoke to these two guys. You may have heard of them, uh, Carl and Richard. And they said, uh, "You know, Richard, they they hosted that speaker idol you referenced earlier." They did. I, I ran into them at a at a conference, and I and I said, I, "I I don't know what I should do. I've been doing the blog posting, and I I want to shift a little bit here." And they said, "Give podcasting a try." You've, you've definitely got a voice for it. You can eat, set up and talk to folks and get into the recording of this. And it, it, it was something that kind of resonated with me. I'm like, all right, yeah, I can, I can do that. But then I ran into um, a, another colleague uh, uh, literally a week later at, a, at another event. And she said to me, you got to check out this live coding thing on Twitch. Hmm. And I got hooked. Hooked on writing code, answering questions, having guests on, and talking and interacting live. Now, this was 2017. Nobody was doing live streams at the volume that we do now. Yeah, and Twitch was mostly just a gaming platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, uh, there's a lot of gaming on there. There's a lot of folks that do other things on there as well. It's interesting to me to watch 
chess competitions and NASA launches <laughs> over on Twitch. But it, folks weren't at the volume that we do now talking about tech and teaching, yeah. making that content available. And I got into it. I jumped in with both feet. And I figured out other ways that we can cross-promote and get content out onto other platforms, publish and share and, and create events, give workshops, all live online. And it's, it, it's been life-changing for me. It's really opened my eyes to different ways, different communities, different folks that we can interact with. And um, it, whether you're live streaming on Twitch or on YouTube, uh, even Facebook gaming, there's, there's a lot out there that we can share and learn from each other. And you, you don't have to be a big name. It, it, publish content regularly, right? You, you publish once a week. I publish, uh, I'm doing live content twice a week. It, getting that content out regularly builds an audience. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if it's good to start. Build the audience, get better out at it, figure out your voice that will take you somewhere and for a, a number of folks on YouTube it really has and, and they're doing quite well for themselves as just now YouTube content creators so um, sharing making that content available is something that I in a, in a day where it, you're kind of hesitant to travel you know I, I'm, I'm not sure I'm ready to travel outside the states yet um but you can always create and publish content to, to YouTube, to Twitch, to right. Facebook, and and that's going to land with folks. And now you've, reach now you've got an international people. audience potentially as well. I think yep. that this is just another example of how the internet has served to democratize a lot of information and a lot of content creators. And, uh, you don't, Absolutely. You don't need huge resources to get started. Yeah. I Gosh, there's a really great presentation at, at a San Diego.net user group, but I'm in, I'm in Philadelphia, I'm in Detroit. How, how do I, I wanna see that presentation? Well, now they record it and publish it on YouTube. Fantastic, yeah. right? Now, like you said, it democratizes. It's not just the 20, 30 people in the room for the, for the user group meeting. Share that content, make it, republish it, and you have no idea who's gonna pick up and watch it and you know what? It, it can help you grow a career. It can help you help other folks learn new things. And I think that's what really we're all in this about is I, I, don't, I don't want to be internet famous. I want people to learn and grow and, and advance their career and figure out new ways to do cool things. If they, if they accomplish something, my job is done. If, if I've only got five, uh, five views on that, that's okay. That's fine with me. If I've got a thousand views on it and, and only one or two people accomplish something, okay, mission still accomplished. It would be nice to have a higher percentage, but we're getting there. Yeah. We're getting there. Uh, well, that's a great goal, although I, I'll, I'd hate to spoil it for you, but you actually already are internet famous. You are <laughs> the Kardashian of .NET Twitch. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> and Jeff, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I'm looking forward to... The .NET Conf in November, and don't be surprised if you see a submission from me. Fantastic. I look forward to it. You stay safe. Yeah, will do. Hey there, my name is Jeff Fritz, and I've been just finishing recording a session here with David, and we've been talking about live streaming and brand new tech conferences coming up like .NET Conf. I, I want to encourage all of you out there to come out, generate a live stream, tune into one of our live streams, check out .NET Conf where you're going to learn all about technology with my friends. <laughs>